NASA's New Horizons spacecraft flew past Pluto, capping a half century of exploration of our solar system. It piqued our interest about what lies beyond Pluto and what can we learn about ourselves and the origins of our solar system. The idea of a new planet is certainly an exciting one for me as a planetary scientist, and I think for all of us. The January 20th paper in the Astronomical Journal is fueling our interest in planetary exploration and stimulating a healthy debate that's part of the scientific process. I couldn't be more pleased about what's happening. You know, it's all about starting the process that could lead to an exciting result new planet on the other side of Pluto. It's named 2012 VP113, jokingly dubbed Biden. Get it? Uh, Corey Powell's editor-at-large for Discover Magazine and Studio. How you doing, Corey? Uh, VP Biden. Right on. There we go. <laughs> Correct on that. Two images show you. This is the arrow obviously pointing to it. But there are three dots on here. One is red, one is green, one is blue. Right. What's significant? So this is, this is the actual Discovery image. Basically, Two astronomers were looking, one little patch of sky very, very far away, looking for exactly this kind of thing. Stars don't move. Planets or anything that's like a planet does. So this is color-coded. This is what they saw on different nights. They are looking for one thing moving. They color-coded it to, to show that all these stars are staying still. This thing is moving, and the way it's moving... So this is just one... It's one object, color-coded. Is three, Pluto on this? Nights. Pluto's in a whole different part of the sky. So this is way out there. This is way out there. Well, this is more, is, than, more than twice as far away as Pluto. Unbelievable. Why does this matter, Corey? Well, there are two ways you can look at it. I think you know, I look at it, first of all, as, a, as an exploration question. That there, you know, We know where we are on Earth. We've mapped our planet. Our solar system is still terra incognita. It's full of surprises. This object is something that astronomers said shouldn't even be there. There's a whole other solar system beyond the planets that we know that are full of these things that are sort of planets, sort of comets. Some of them they call dwarf planets. That's what they're calling this one. What we're seeing is we're seeing our neighborhood. We're seeing what's around us. And then the second part, we're seeing where we came from. Mm -hmm. We're seeing where we came from. Mm -hmm. The oft-contested designation of Pluto as the ninth planet is back in the news again today. The California Institute of Technology published a study claiming they have discovered a true ninth planet beyond Pluto. For the first time in 170 years, evidence of this ninth planet was found on the far edge of the system. Astronomers at, this, at the California Institute of Technology have not directly seen it yet but they think it's up to 10 times bigger than Earth and 20 times farther away than Neptune. Two scientists at Caltech say they've discovered a ninth planet in the outer corners of our solar system. It's pretty exciting to know it's out there and waiting to be found. Two years ago, we realized that there was something funny going on in the outer solar system. Well, these orbits are, are showing us, they're showing us sort of a gravitational one-way sign towards the existence of an additional body. These researchers say for the last 13 years, a handful of objects have been found by other astronomers, and all of these objects swing in the same direction. That can't happen by chance. So we knew something funny was going on. Many may remember Mike Brown for his role in demoting Pluto as a planet about a decade ago. What's the evidence that it's there? So the evidence is that we can look at objects orbiting around our solar system and figure out why their motions are the way they are because of the gravitational influences of everything else around. So we looked at a small group of objects newly discovered and realized we couldn't actually completely understand their motion. However, if we insert into the equation about that an object about the size of this planet nine, everything then worked out perfectly. So that's what gives the suspicion that it really does exist. They can't exactly see this thing from a telescope or, or anything like that. Instead, they are using data about uh, how other objects as far out as Pluto uh, are, are reacting and moving out of alignment, getting out of its way. So data like that 
actually suggests a heavy gravitational pull, which primarily comes from things that are, are qualified to be called planet. Uh, but they do have two giant telescopes on two different continents searching for the physical evidence of this thing's existence. Right now, the best that they can say is that something really, really, really big beyond Pluto exists because space rocks are moving out of the way. Um, as well as it's causing misaligned positions uh, among the outer planets. The orbit of other celestial bodies seem to re be responding to something. What that is, nobody can actually confirm just yet. It's, it's so far away that even though it's big, it's very, very dim and it would be very tough to spot with a telescope. I'm also fascinated at the idea that this planet could be so far out there and still our sun be the mass that is keeping it in the gravitational pull of our solar system. Right, right, yeah, but no, that's, it's true. That's incredible. And so there was a thought at one point from scientists that when they thought that there was something beyond Pluto, that it might have been all the mass of objects floating in the, in the Kyber belt, but it's not. Right, so, so the, all those objects are out there and they have a lot of mass, and originally the scientists said, look, a planet is such a crazy idea, <laughs> maybe it's the Kuiper Belt itself that's pulling it on, on itself and making these, these orbits look funny. And they ran simulations and they tried to make that work and it didn't work, it mm. just didn't work. There's not enough stuff out there. So you don't see it, but you said it's all about the numbers. So two scientists are playing around with numbers and they think what? They think, huh, this doesn't add up. Yeah. We need to ask some other folks to take a look at this for us and tell us if we're crazy. And sure enough, that's what they did. The Caltech astronomers looked at the number and said, you know that idea about there being another planet? That's not a crazy idea. It looks like it's really possible. So now what they'll do is they'll let this information out to the rest of the astronomical community to try to help figure out what's going on, to make sure that everything's correct. And now they'll also do the observations. And, and some have already stepped forward to say they're convinced. Well, it is. It, it, uh, yes, they are pretty well convinced now they need the visual evidence to back it up because, yeah, as I said, the numbers yeah. don't lie. But the critics of this study say that it's possible that this, uh, this large body is simply an ancient core, an core of a, a gas giant that was ejected out to the farthest reaches of the solar system thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. What does this tell us about our solar system? Well, one thing it tells us is that we don't really understand it as well as we thought we did. <laughs> and another is that it probably had a very violent beginning. This thing was probably formed much closer in and then flung out, maybe in a close encounter with Jupiter or something. You mentioned that scientists haven't seen it yet because of how far away it is and yeah. how dim it is. Is there a way for them to get visual evidence? Yes, so, so the biggest telescopes in the world can theoretically see this thing if they're looking in exactly the right place. And with the publication of this new paper today, uh, they are now going to start to look in earnest. But Batygin and Brown are not the first to claim that they've discovered a new major planet beyond Neptune. In fact, the hunt for Planet X has been on for over a century. But every you guys, I got a premonition tonight about uh, Planet X, Nibiru, uh, the hell planet, that's what I call it, and I believe that that planet is going to show during the solar eclipse, and here's why, if you give it any thought. If you've been watching my videos, you can see uh, Planet Nibiru uh, before the sunrise, you can see it. You, you, you're making out a shape of that planet right now you know and then after the sun sets you can see Nibiru right after the sun sets you can see that planet now if the moon move in front of the sun and it becomes dark uh, that's on earth it would it, it would and it should really expose planet Nibiru behind it so everyone in the United States should be able to see that red planet glowing you know and that's gonna freak a lot of people out what else first Thessalonians 5 2 number 4 says for yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night so uh, it's gonna be darkness you know night and why people are saying peace and security and they've been saying that for a while then sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains come upon a pregnant woman just a little bit by little bit and they will not escape but you are not in darkness brothers for that day to surprise you like a thief that mean we knowledgeable that that planet is right there and we knowledgeable that you know the day of the Lord is near so it's not going to surprise us we do know that it's coming we don't know the hour and everything else but we do know that it's coming 
And so if we move to Joel 2, 31, it says the sun shall be turned into darkness. That's what's going to happen on August 21st, 2017. And the moon into blood. And so if you think about it, when the sun turned into darkness, if Nibiru, that big bloody red planet is out there shining, it's going to make the moon red. Because the sun is going to be dark and, and it's going to be a glow that makes the moon glow red before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And so that makes me look at that verse totally different than I did before. And then what is a solar eclipse? It's a lineup of the sun and the moon and the earth. So the moon directly between the sun and the earth casts a shadow on our planet. So if you are in a dark part of the shadow, you see a total eclipse. If you're in the light, light, light part, then you see a partial eclipse. So, which states is it going to hit? Georgia, Nebraska, Illinois, Idaho, Kentucky, Missouri, Kansas, uh, Oregon, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee, and Wyoming. You know, the list goes on probably, but it, it's, it, that's what's predicted to hit these states. What time? I can only say California time, so... The time begins Monday, August 21st, 2017, at 9.05 a.m., and then it ends uh, August 21st, 2017, at 11.44, right before noon. That's not good, because there was a prophecy or something that I read somewhere or something about that uh, something was going to happen at noon. I don't know. Anyway, and I, and I can't remember where I, I saw that. Okay, what else is going down? Okay, we got military movements. Where? Georgia, Nebraska, Illinois, Idaho, Kentucky, Missouri, Kansas, Oregon, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Wyoming. Why? They Do they strategically know something is going to go down and they getting ready? And then I noticed that a lot of these uh, vehicles look like they could, you can put rocket launchers and stuff on the back of it, you know, those uh, ballistic missile launchers. Uh, that's suspicious, you know. And so, what else is going on? You got a planet lineup about 15 to 30 minutes before totality. The planet's in order of brightness. It's going to be four of these planets. And that's um, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, and Mercury. And somebody had a dream about four moons, like a four planets and stuff. And then it was like the end of time. And, and just go ahead and listen to this. So I looked out the window right over her left shoulder. And as I looked up, I looked into the sky and it was night. I could see that there were four moons stacked up in a perfect line. But they weren't evenly spaced. The top two are right next to each other almost touching and there's a space and another moon and then another space and the fourth moon and I thought no way so I ran out of the bus and, and I went outside and stood on the ground and looked back up into the sky again and there was just one and I thought what was that all about and I'm going to put a picture a picture of it on there on the video when I got done doing this clip but uh biblical verses about the, the darkness so it's saying Isaiah 13 10 for the stars of the heaven and constellations therefore shall not give their light the sun shall be darkened solar eclipse in his going forth when God is coming and the moon shall not cause her light to shine and I will punish the world for their evil punish the world for their evil and the wicked of their iniquity so I've been saying for a long time y'all need to get y'all stuff together it ain't just y'all. Every last person on this earth need to get their stuff together. And God goes on to say, And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Every, there ain't going to be nobody proud. Let's say if, if we see that big red planet visible. Uh, dig all your money, hopes, and dreams, huh? Nobody's proud. You know, ain't nobody going to stand up seeing a big red planet uh, 20 times larger than the earth saying hey y'all I'm, I'm a famous singer who gonna care huh 
and he said, I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So we're going to move to Joel 3.15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. He didn't say the world, you know, he didn't say Gentileville. He said the children of Israel, and then he didn't mention any more. Matthew 24, 29, and I ain't saying anybody else ain't going to get saved. I'm just saying he didn't mention you. Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from the heavens, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Shaken, so this earthquake. Isaiah 9, 19, Th throw the, I mean, through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened. And the people shall be as fuel for the fire. No man shall spare his brother. And the people shall be fuel for the fire. So he said he was going to save Israel. And he said all the rest of the people is like walking pieces of fuel for the hell fire. That's something to think about. So this is not no ordinary eclipse. This could be the end and I'm just I ain't saying okay the spirit told me anything if it was a definite from the spirit I was like this is definite this is serious pack y'all shit up we finna go make sure y'all shit is right clean up your house get your kids together I am telling you that but I'm not telling you that be, uh, because I got a, a warning from the spirit uh, it was just a premonition I don't know exactly where it came from but it says you know what that planet should show you know, and then what pissed me off is as I was doing some research, you know, on other people to see if anybody else got this premonition, somebody else had it, you know, a couple of months before me tonight. That pisses me off. That pisses me off. You know, and out of all the people are Gentile. God, you know, and I ain't saying you know the Lord does what he want but I'm just saying that I don't like for people to be in front of me I mean I'm just talking about I don't, you know I don't know I don't like I mean I like to be on edge I like to be cutting I like to be in front and I ain't talking about arrogance or nothing like that I just like to know you know I have, I have a thing about being the last one to know about something you know, I don't want to be the last one to know, and I'm pretty sure you don't either. You know, there's some dumbasses out there who don't care, but I'm not one of them. I, I want to know about everything, you know, that's coming, you know. And I hate that someone got information, and it happens from time to time, that people get the information before me, you know. And I, I just hate being behind. I'll be like, Lord, please. You know, on, on some things, I'm, a fr I'm in front. Uh, no one has filmed that planet like I filmed that planet. No one has got a big, huge, glowing red planet in their very videos except me. So I am in front with that. And no one is really telling you how to get yourself together with the Lord thoroughly like I'm doing. I mean, thoroughly. You know, and making sure, I, you know, I stay on your ass about it. Uh, you know, people is lax and it, it, this ain't no day to be lax. This is a day to be serious. Wrapped the nose.